order of operations. And the order of operations is just that. It's the order that we perform the mathematical operations. So if you have a complicated expression that you need to simplify, first you always work inside grouping symbols. And grouping symbols are parentheses and brackets that you're probably familiar with. But there are also other things like absolute value bars, the radical sign, like a square root, and a fraction bar is a grouping symbol. So we'll have to worry about some of those things as we go on. After simplifying inside grouping symbols, then you simplify all exponents. And after that, you, when you've done all the exponents, you multiply and divide from left to right. So multiplication and division are on the same level of the order of operations, and you do all of those left to right. And then finally, you would add and subtract. Again, same level of order of operations, so you add and subtract left to right. And now we'll go on to some examples. Okay, for our first example, we're going to simplify this expression. And notice it's an expression because there's no equal sign with something else on the other side. So it's just an expression to simplify, and we're going to follow the order of operations. So we have some parentheses. So inside parentheses first, we are going to do 5 minus 7, and so negative 2 to the fourth power divided by 4. And you also always want to try and organize your work in a nice manner like this with um, you know, recopying things that you haven't done yet so that your instructor can understand all your steps and all your logic. Um, so next we need to go down to exponents. And so we need to simplify. Negative 2 is the base of the exponent of 4. So we need to simplify negative 2 to the 4th, which of course means negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. And so we're going to get a positive 16. And then we still need to divide by 4. Okay, so now pretty much all we have left is multiplying and dividing. So we're going to go through, multiply, divide, left to right. So we're going to have to do 3 times 16 first, 48, divided by 4. And then last thing to do, 48 divided by 4, so my result is 12. Okay, for our second example of order of operations, we're going to simplify this expression. And so, um, one more time, we have to start with any kind of grouping symbols. Well, we have this big fraction bar this time, and some students don't realize that a fraction bar is really a grouping symbol. So this problem is really as if it were like this, with parentheses around both the numerator and the denominator. Because we have to clean those up first, and then take care of the division in the fraction bar last, in this case. And so, within these parentheses now that I've added, because of the big fraction bar, we're going to, again, follow order of operations inside those. So, up here in the top, I need to take care of my exponents. So, negative 2 to the third power. So, I have negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. So, that's going to give me a negative 8. And then, I need to add to that 4 squared. So that's just 4 times 4, which is 16. And I'm going to divide that whole thing by the denominator here. And so in the denominator, I'm going to also take care of the exponent that I have, which is just 5 squared. So I have 3 minus 25 for 5 squared, and then plus 3 times 6. Okay. So within my grouping symbol, numerator and denominator, I've just taken care of exponents. So now I'm going to move down and take care of any multiplying or dividing. Okay, well the numerator, I don't see any of those. So down in the denominator, I'm going to just take care of the one multiplication, 3 times 6. So notice that I've recopied the rest, even though I didn't really do anything. I want to show my work logically in a nice order so everyone can read it. So I have in my denominator 3 minus 25 plus the 3 times 6, 18. So I'm still continuing to simplify my numerator and my denominator. And so now I have additions and subtractions there. So negative 8 plus 16. So if students ever have trouble with the sign numbers, adding and subtracting, I usually say, think about your checkbook. So if I'm in the hole, $8, and I deposit 16, I've now 
made up by eight and I'm into the positive by eight dollars. And in the denominator here, since I have two operations, subtraction and addition, and they're both on the same order of level, level of order of operations, I'm going to go left to right. So three minus 25, and I have three bucks in my checkbook, and I write a $25 check. Uh-oh, I went in the hole, right, to negative $22. And then I, someone gives me some money or something, I add, put in a check for 18, I deposit, but I'm still in the hole, right? So I would have negative $4 in my checkbook if we think about sort of money for the adding and subtracting there. Okay, and so now I'm at my very last step. The only thing that's left is division, because as you know, a fraction really means division. So I do eight divided by negative four, and so my result is negative two. Okay, we're going to simplify this expression following the order of operations. And so, first step is always inside grouping symbols. So we just have this one set of parentheses here. So we do 2 minus 9, and so I will have 5 plus 3 times 2 minus 9, negative 7, squared. And so after grouping symbols are the exponents, so I need to uh, square negative 7, and so I'll have 5 plus 3 times a negative times a negative is positive, so times positive 49. And next becomes the multiplying and dividing uh, operation. So we get through here, and I see I need to do 3 times 49. So I get 147 there. And then finally, we just need to add. It's the only operation left. And most of us could do this in our head too, but we would probably use the commutative property. We would think 147 plus 5 instead of uh, 5 plus. 147, and we would get our final result of 152. Okay, for our last example on order of operations, the instructions this time are a little bit different, and it's always important to read your instructions carefully. So this time we want to evaluate this expression, the opposite of x squared minus 5 times x, if x is negative 3. Because x is a variable, and so in algebra, if you have a variable, it could vary, it could change. And so this time, x is negative 3. So we want to evaluate this expression, see what the value of it is. Okay, so what we have to do is uh, basically substitute in the value negative 3 every time we see an x in this expression. Now, this part right here is tricky for some students. Because think of this as the opposite of x squared. So x has to be squared, and then we're going to make it negative or take the opposite of it. And so to show that we're squaring x, the number negative 3, you have to use parentheses when you write this, when you substitute it in. So it has to be the opposite of negative 3 is getting squared because x is negative 3. And then we're going to subtract 5 times x. 5x five means 5 times x. So again, we need to use some parentheses there to show that we're multiplying the 5 with the negative 3. Okay, so that's just substituting it, substituting it in. Now we're going to follow order of operations. So inside the parentheses, there's nothing to do. They're just there to show the operation. And so we can go to exponents. So I need to square my negative 3. I need to do negative 3 times negative 3. But I still have this negative sign on the outside. So I'm going to have the opposite of positive 9 when I square negative 3. And then I'm going to have a negative 5 times a negative 3. And since negative times negative is positive, I would probably clean that up and write it as plus 15, adding 15. And so finally, we just work left to right. And so we have negative 9 plus 15. Or we could use the commutative property if that makes it easier for you to think about it, this is the same problem as 15 minus 1. So we would get 6. Okay, that concludes our review of order of operations. So if you're feeling like that was pretty good and you think you've remembered order of operations, now you should try clicking on the link and try some practice problems on your own.